уважаемые коллеги. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, good morning. Uh, we proceed with the deliberations of our Congress. And to get uh, started to session uh, uh, with session number 13 uh, on the uh, treatment issues. And uh, before uh, we get started, um, I would like to introduce McDoherty. Uh, the director for the global programs of uh, HIV, AIDS, and hepatitis. So the floor is yours, McDoherty, Miss Mrs. McDoherty. Do Good afternoon. Thank you very much for inviting WHO to chair this important session on HIV treatment. I'm Meg Doherty, the director of the global HIV, hepatitis, and STI programs at WHO in Geneva. And it, I'm particularly excited to be able to chair this session with my co-chair, Professor Gosov, um, during this session. We have six presenters today, and they will be speaking about areas of HIV treatment in the region, and it should be an exciting session. This year is important because we have the global AIDS strategy that has just been adopted. We have the WHO global health sector strategies on HIV that are under development that will take us to our goals for 2030 for eliminating AIDS as a public health threat by 2030. And we also have a high level meeting on HIV and AIDS in June this year. So there is so much uh, work to be done, but also an incredible amount of game changers that have occurred in HIV treatment. And we'll hear about some of those today. Some of the important things we have seen over the last few years include TLD or tenofovir, lamivudine, dolutegravir as a fixed dose combination, which has been able to increase the number of people on treatment as well as dolutegravir, lower doses for children. And during the times of COVID, we have seen that these take-home medicines for longer periods of time have enabled people to continue their HIV treatment. So I will not speak more. Uh, we are asking that every speaker introduce themselves to save time. And we're also asking that you stick to your 10 minutes so that we hope after the end of this really important session, we have time for questions from the audience and or from those who are on the presentation uh, panel. So with this, let me pass over to the first speaker, my colleague, Nicole, Nicole Segu. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm the Nicole Segui. I'm the uh, HIV, STI, and viral hepatitis team lead in the WHO Regional Office for Europe. So I'm going to share my slides. So my my there is an echo here. I think we need yeah. My, my, my short presentation will be about ensuring fast scale-up of antiretroviral treatment in the WHO uh, European region. As you know, we had committed to elimination of uh, HIV as a public health threat by 2030. We have fast track objective, UNA's 90-90-90 targets by 2020 that are now expanded to 95-95-95 by 2025. And we have tools to simplify decentralized testing and simplify harmonized treatment regimen with more efficacious, uh, tolerable uh, regimen, as mentioned by, by Meg. On the right side, you can see the global cascade um, with 81% of people living with HIV who know their status and 67% of people living with HIV who are on treatment. Here, this is the cascade for our region. You can see that we have 78% people living with HIV aware of their status, but only 58% of people living with HIV who are actually on treatment. So we have a big gap in our region 
on ART coverage. We also have late diagnosis. In 2019, 53% of new diagnoses in our region uh, were late presenters with CG4 levels less than 350. Those late presenters are more in the older age group and among people who have been uh, con uh, infected uh, through heterosexual transmission. We also had to face this year from 2020, um, the uh, COVID pandemic. We've assessed the impact of COVID in our region uh, on, on the services for HIV, particular testing, treatment and prevention. During the lockdown, the first lockdown in, in March uh, to May 2020, and we looked at the speed of recovery after the ease of the lockdown. We found that the, the services that was most disrupted was testing, up to 50% decrease in testing during lockdowns uh, last year. Uh, and the return to normal is really not even across countries. In terms of treatment, because we have less new diagnosis, we have less people who initiated treatment. But people who were already on treatment have been overall maintained on treatment, and this is a very good thing. In terms of prevention, we also had specific uh, impact on uh, disruption on prevention services. So what are the challenges to achieve the higher coverage uh, in our region and particularly in Eastern Europe, Central Asia? We have delays in confirming HIV test results because we still use Western blood that delays the, the, the return of results. And we have a significant number of people lost before antiretroviral treatment initiation. We have late diagnosis, delay in ART for other reasons like stigma and long waiting time and various levels of quality of care. Rapid ART start is not universally adopted. We have also issues with cost of the best regimen, dolitecravir. Um, that can result in poor, uh, poor retention. We have variabilities in frequency of visit and uh, antiretroviral treatment dispensing, and a significant proportion of people who actually disengage from care. So what are the recommendations uh, from WHO and the latest updates that can be useful to increase the ART coverage? The first is about moving away from Western blood. That is a recommendation from 2019. First, now WHO recommends HIV testing algorithm that use a combination of HIV rapid diagnostic test and enzyme immunoassay using a three test algorithm. Several countries are still using Western blood, particularly in Eastern Europe, and we need to move away from this old technology. Newer tests are highly accurate and can provide same-day diagnosis. And what are the shortcomings of Western blood? First, the interpretation is complex. Second, the indeterminate results are very common due to non-specific reactivity and cross-reactivity. There is a reduced sensitivity in early and acute infection, as you see on the graph on the right, and a high turnaround time with very high risk of loss to follow-up. So we need to look at uh, ways, possible ways to um, uh, remove Western blood for test, from our testing algorithm. And some countries have recently moved away like Belgium because of those reasons that I just listed. We also had in 2019 recommendation on better regimen and harmonization of uh, dolitecravir-based regimens across population group, adult, adolescent, children, and also TB patient. And with uh, changing evidence and also for um, women of childbearing age. We also uh, recommend to uh, move away from the efavirenz 600 milligram 
and use efavirenz 400 milligrams in, in our uh, treatment regimen when we need to use efavirenz. We also have in March 2021, so this year, service delivery recommendation um, about uh, providing a differentiated service delivery for different type of, of uh, patient living with HIV. I'll just through the main, go through the main um, updates and new recommendation. In terms of the uh, clinical visits and the refills, uh, WHO now recommends to uh, have visits and refills every three to six months and pre preferably every six months uh, if feasible. And we have tried during the lockdowns, during COVID, we have experience of uh, longer uh, refills. We did um, mostly three months because we wanted to preserve, preserve the drug we had, but if we can, we could go to six months. There is a um, recommendation also on tracing people who have disengaged from care. We need to also integrate uh, uh, approaches for uh, people-centered care, for including contraception, sexual reproductive health, diabetes and hypertension services, uh, and psychological support within the HIV care to provide the best quality of care for people who need multiple services. So multidisciplinary team could provide a people-centered approach. This is just to reiterate that we have had more and more evidence that we should implement intervention to trace people who disengage from care. In our region, in some centers, we have as many people who disengage from care as the number who actually start ART in one year. Uh, we have a key population driven epidemic with some population who have difficulties to uh, come to the facilities. So approaches to uh, uh, find people back include uh, remote communication through phone, text, mail, email, and in-person tracing or combination of both. And it has been proven that we can uh, have up to 60% people who re-engage in care with those methods. Recommendation also uh, to simplify and harmonize the uh, start of ART for people who also have tuberculosis, co-infected people. So the new recommendation is the ART should be started as soon as possible within two weeks of initiating TB treatment, regardless of CD4 count among people living with HIV, uh, except for those who's, who have a meningitis. This is also valid for adults and adolescents and also children and infants. This, this is based on new evidence uh, balancing the, I mean, in the risk of uh, iris, uh, I mean, in immune rec reconstitution syndrome and the risk of mortality. So um, this simplifies the approach. New recommendation also from March 2020 are dated refined uh, threshold and time for viral load monitoring. So viral load should be um, done six months after ART initiation and then 12 months after ART initiation and yearly thereafter. In terms of thresholds, um, for people with um, viral load less than 50 copies, they should be maintained on treatment. For those who have viral load more than 1,000 copies, they should be switched. And in between, they should have support for ad adherence counseling and retesting for viral load after three months and so on. So um, it's a refined uh, that was uh, uh, actually uh, quite a uh, uh, refined type of uh, algorithm that was quite uh, uh, demanded by countries and uh, will have uh, probably better uh, outcome with this algorithm. Now, um, diagnosis integration across program, we have experience of using uh, multi-disease uh, molecular platform uh, to provide point of care uh, uh, diagnosis and uh, avoid delays and loss to follow up. 
we know that there is capacity within the TB uh, program with the existing TB uh, platforms to do also uh, early infant diagnosis and viral load monitoring, and we promote the use of such platforms because it will improve patient outcome and timely uh, result of, uh, of various uh, disease and, and uh, viral load monitoring. Finally, this is the guidance that WHO um, uh, um, prepared uh, to face the COVID pandemic. So this is about maintaining essential uh, services during COVID, not only for HIV, but there is an HIV section. And the recommendation were a long pending recommendation in the existing uh, WHO guidelines. For example, self-testing scale up, and we have seen in our region significant self-testing scale up that we need to maintain after COVID. Take home doses of uh, opioid substitution therapy, multi-month dispensation, of ART and PrEP, I'm already talked about it, uh, and also tele and video consultation and engaging courier companies and community groups to support home delivery of treatment, which we did very well in our region. There is also recommendation about restarting and catching up services uh, when possible after ease of lockdowns. For example, catch-up prevention outreach and testing campaign for key population and catch-up of viral load testing, which we are doing in our region. This is my last slide. Just to uh, inform or reiterate that we have a um, phone application about the testing guidelines, the treatment guidelines, and also PrEP. And... Uh, we wish that uh, you know and that you use them because they are very uh, hands-on and user-friendly. Uh, you will have the updated versions of the guideline on it that they come. Thank you very much for your attention. And thanks for, to Meg and the team in WHO headquarters who actually works on the latest evidence and develop the guideline. And thanks to Elena, uh, um, both from uh, WHO European office for helping me with this presentation. Спасибо, Николь. Спасибо за выступление. Николь, thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you for your methodological help. Thank you very much. Dear colleagues, now let us move on to another presentation. Olga Latysheva. Uh, in Galatasheva, the Deputy Head Research Center of Prevention and Treatment of HIV in Pregnant Women and Children, Women and HIV Issues and Solutions. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. It is my honor and privilege to see you in person. And now let me um, present uh, my report, which is called uh, Women and HIV Issues and Solutions. Our Minister of, Depart uh, Minister of Health has said that this story is striking due to COVID spread. It is important that we have a chance to discuss our issues, our problems, which are really aggravated. It's hard to solve them, and they are extremely topical. The time limit for my presentation is brief. This, uh, that's why I'll try to uh, outline my topic. The HIV infection in women in the RF accounts for half of cases for those who are PLWH and for new cases you can see the data of the year 2019 unfortunately the data of 2020 is accessible is not accessible but still i think that uh, the situation hasn't still changed on PLWH now so we may focus on the half of people who are PLWH and who are living in the RF Why do we pay special attention to women? 50% of those who live with HIV are treated this way. Sorry, there are some technical problems with the pointer. Let me move on to the next slide. I would like the pointer to work quickly. Well, we can see it. 
40% of women live with HIV, and heterosexual women prevail in this group. Approximately 70% of women are sexually infected. As for women of uh, childbearing age, there are 80% of them. And here the pathway, the sexual pathway is even higher, and it reflects the HIV spread in the general population. Over 200,000 people are women who have children, their mothers. What we are actually interested in, in terms of HIV infection in women, uh, I mean prenatal prevention, never will we forget about it. In this regard, we focused on the importance of uh, early diagnosis and timely me uh, medical checkup and uh, early prescription of RARVT in order to decrease the risk of prenatal transmission. But uh, that this uh, list of aspects is not comprehensive. Nowadays, over 350,000 women live in the RF with HIV, and uh, these uh, figures, according to the official statistics, fluctuate, but they do not increase. That's logical, because we see that uh, approximately 50% of the newly diagnosed are women, and the proportion of women is even decreasing in certain time periods. What are the reasons for that? Our women have the short life expectancy. I mean, the women with HIV. Nowadays, women who are mothers, there are two, over 200,000 of them. Uh, the mother of each fifth child has a severe immunodeficiency. Let me remind you what it means. Severe immunodeficiency is uh, m means that uh, CD4 uh, cells are there, and there are fewer than 200 cells when speed indicating disease is spread. It is associated with the suppression of the immune system. It contributes to the fact that uh, these patients have high risk of death, and this risk will pertain and uh, it uh, increases more than two, uh, 20 times in the first years of life when it is diagnosed. And it also contributes to the fact that the life expectancy of this woman is uh, short. We also have some studies on the HIV-positive mothers with severe immunodeficiency. These data have been processed preliminarily since it's worth mentioning and it's illustrative. You see that uh, women with a severe immune deficiency are the following. And uh, more than 50% of them have the critically low levels of the uh, cells, 50 to 100 cells. As for prenatal prevention, of which we are very, we are extremely proud, we see that uh, if women give birth to a few children and uh, get chemo prevention, and do not get the ARVT, these children are healthy. We can see the case of a woman who has uh, five children, and three children were born when she had uh, HIV, and all these children are healthy. It means that we have accomplished this uh, task successfully. And what happened to this woman in 2020? She has, uh, she has uh, 48 CD cells. And you can see the patterns of the disease related to HIV of the fourth stage, um, uh, whereas the ARVT was interrupted after delivery. She stopped uh, taking the drugs, and uh, HIV encephalitis and uh, certain mega, uh, megaloviral infection was also diagnosed. And there were also some depression disorders and the metabolic syndrome in this woman. And uh, this causes the decline in the quality and the life quality and the life expectancy. One of the reasons of uh, severe immune deficiency in these women is uh, withdrawal from uh, 
clinical examinations, and many of them happened after the delivery of this woman. Our women are multifunctional and multitasking. Still, they are also mothers. And first and foremost, they will care about women, and uh, the children will be their top priority. And due to these uh, conditions which accompany the after delivery case, and I mean the depression and uh, stress, this doesn't contribute to increasing adherence. Each third mother has immune deficiency, and each fifth woman faces the AIDS stage. Let me remind you. What does AIDS condition mean? It's not only dec uh, decrease in CD4 cells, but there are also some speed indicating diseases, which I presented here. They are like bricks of this house. You can see different conditions which were diagnosed. Cryptococcus, infection. I will not enumerate them. You are all aware of these constituents, which are part of uh, the AIDS. The death risk increases fourfold and psychoneurological diseases and cardiovascular risks also aggravate but we now now we know how to combat with this we have the rescue ARVT this therapy increases the um, number of the CD4 cells it's not always very efficient uh, effective and sometimes immune deficiency remains, still we have this um, therapy available. When we constructed our house as AIDS, we put the basement, which was very hard to eliminate. It was practically impossible. The events which affected the men and women due to AIDS occurrence, it impacted the cognitive a sphere and the nervous system. The con consequences of uh, AIDS indicating diseases were also severe, as well as depression, anxiety. And sometimes uh, we could see the occurrence of uh, cancer. It is very hard to combat it rapidly. Sometimes uh, people, uh, women will suffer from it for the whole life. We can see the preliminary data of mothers who were diagnosed, and only one tenth of them did not have any psychoneurological disorders. There is also a somatic pathology which was diagnosed in 90% of women, and these women are extremely young, they're over 30. We can see it nowadays in real life, and uh, the I use see no pathology um, as to 10% uh, and just uh, three fourths fourth had the uh, HIV uh, encephalite. Uh, but as to the cognitive sphere, uh, we see in here that only one fourth didn't have any deviation from the norm, but about 50% uh, had a lower memory, a lower concentration and uh, lower mentality uh, status. And uh, sometimes uh, people tend to ask, why do they need um, uh, extra memory and extra concentration, uh, maybe just for the sake of statistics. Uh, but let me show you some data uh, as a result of uh, questionnaires uh, they filled up. And how did they uh, how did they assess their status as a result of uh, ART um, administering? And they did it on a regular basis with no interruption. In 80 percent, it tends to be a quite efficient one, and only one tenth uh, say no to ART, and one third of them have some side effects, and 37% uh, are dissatisfied with the scheme. And uh, uh, actually, we have to, uh, to uh, view this uh, from the angle of a physician and how uh, these uh, women assess their health status. And already three fourths of women uh, just showed uh, some. Uh, kind of uh, phenomenon uh, which uh, were um, close to negative. 12% uh, were suppressed by it. Uh, some uh, didn't actually 
uh, abide by the ruling of IART. And they actually were quite honest, but some played tricks with us. But psychologists, psychoneurologists, cognitive status specialists had to assess their status. But women were not always committed to that mode of medications administering. And uh, sometimes um, we are talking about subclinical cl and uh, clinical uh, depressions. Uh, and uh, each uh, second uh, uh, female uh, may have uh, uh, this uh, specific status. As to ART, uh, they uh, were uh, subject uh, to administering it, but 12 of them didn't get this therapy, uh, but the majority uh, of them actually interrupted this uh, therapy or it wasn't very reliable. And uh, I would like to give you some kind of an extreme case. Uh, how can you be committed uh, to IRT if some cognitive uh, uh, impairment is in place? And uh, when they start uh, reacting adequately, the uh, female uh, said that uh, they, for the f as if for the first time, saw their own child and actually uh, uh, females um, had some kind of a blurred uh, um, mentality and blurred concentration, and they actually forgot about uh, their children. And what are those uh, schemes of IRT? And uh, they, this is not how all the problems uh, may be settled, as well as the in-depth uh, uh, deviations and impairment. Um, and uh, as to 50% uh, of uh, women, uh, the protease inhibitors were administered to them in the course of uh, IRT. Uh, administering and that may entail the side effects and um, more than 70 percent had uh, those side effects and some kind of related diseases and in more than 70 percent uh, uh, cases are quite distinctive and they interrupted the therapy but nevertheless uh, we have to uh, concentrate on that, uh, and uh, the inhibitors of a protease uh, is uh, not um, the remedy uh, for the majority of women as it affects the central nervous system. And if we administer uh, those um, uh, drugs uh, which uh, do not penetrate uh, onto uh, uh, barriers, uh, so we cannot treat um, HIV uh, AIDS this way. But if uh, the penetration via DNA is in place, uh, so that should be the inhibitors of integrase. These are high priority uh, drugs, and uh, that is raltegravir and dolotegravir, and these are uh, special uh, medications for adults. They have a high level of penetration uh, via the barrier, and they may affect the uh, HIV um, encephalitis. Uh, let me say a few words about the efficiency of IRT. Uh, we're supposed to have a more detailed overview dedicated to that particular issue. So we talked about the commitment. We talked about the um, uh, a mode uh, for administering of various uh, medications. We have to overcome certain risks uh, of uh, the uh, inflammation, especially that uh, of uh, a liver, and it may bring about uh, the hepatitis, uh, and uh, so it could be the initiation of aggression. It may launch the oncological processes. Um, uh, therefore, we have to be really keen on the physical and mental health of our uh, contingent, uh, and uh, prevention uh, goes uh, first and foremost. And uh, the multidisciplinary approach turns to be indispensable 
indispensable as of today. This is the strategy we're talking about. It identified uh, this method of treatment. And if children are born from uh, HIV-infected women, uh, should not uh, be impaired. And, uh, of course, the comprehensive approach uh, uh, to uh, the females uh, giving uh, birth to the child is uh, the cornerstone strategy of ours. And uh, our key goal is to retain the health of the mother and retain the health of children, even uh, amidst uh, the uh, HIV uh, infection. And uh, 95% uh, of them are born HIV-free, but um, nevertheless, there is still a problem, and we have to spell it out. Thank you for your kind attention. So we proceed with our deliberations, and the next speaker is uh, uh, Vasilio Sigadian, uh, the Epidemiological Institute, Rospetrebnadzor. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, dear colleagues, uh, the attendees to that conference and online uh, delegates and um, uh, when we talk about the HIV infected uh, children and mothers uh, we couldn't just resort uh, to the IRT uh, or just to talk about the immunal status. Uh, and uh, it, this is a very broad-based uh, issue. And really, we have to speak about the criteria of the uh, good health of a person uh, having HIV. And thus, we talk about uh, HIV-infected women, HIV-infected children. And indeed, we have uh, to make a special program. And Leila Saimorova and Navaza Baranova talked about it yesterday. We need uh, to uh, program the health of children for uh, the coming uh, 1,000 days. Uh, originally, it starts uh, from the medical examination of the HIV-infected women. Uh, we, they have uh, to to um, visit our centers, uh, uh, maybe rubella uh, antibodies are to be identified, and vaccination uh, could be an option. And uh, rubella seems to be very contagious and uh, may bring about the pathology of children. And so we also have to think of the uh, inherent uh, infections uh, uh, which uh, may hit uh, the embryo of the HIV-infected uh, uh, mothers. So we have to think uh, of children, first and foremost. Inga Barisna talked about it. Uh, but uh, uh, we have achieved a great success uh, in the field of the prevention of the, the vertical transmission of HIV. And uh, I uh, represent the center, as well as uh, Inga Barisna's center, uh, spare no effort as uh, to making a progress in this field. And uh, in 2019, more than 190,000 children were born from HIV-infected children, and those infected constituted 52,066. But 138,000 uh, were born healthy. But the question arises, to what extent uh, they were healthy? and over the past uh, few years, uh, we've been discussing uh, this problem uh, quite uh, uh, often, and um, uh, Mrs. Ladin and uh, Mrs. Kazerina talked about it, and uh, in um, 2018, 15,000 children were born. Uh, in 2019, 13,000 plus. Um, but in 28, uh, 132 uh, children uh, died. And in uh, uh, the 2019, it was 91 out of those born from HIV-infected mothers. But in 2019, only five were HIV-infected. Uh, what are the causes for the uh, death of these children? And we may only give some data of our centers, thus formulating the reasonable causes of such 
uh, lethal effect. And uh, this becomes absolutely indispensable for us. Uh, and you, dear colleagues, represent your own centers. You know the frequency uh, of uh, some uh, uh, problems uh, with ch uh, among children uh, having HIV-infected mothers. What uh, is the cause uh, for um, newly born uh, uh, dead babies and uh, uh, what is the cause for neonatal uh, losses uh, for uh, low uh, weight children and uh, what is the problem with children's disability. Academician Baranova told us yesterday that infections cause uh, the disability of children. Uh, what about the numbers uh, you may cite and uh, can you just uh, give some uh, definite number of uh, these uh, particular effects and diseases. And what are the measures uh, to mitigate this effect? Everything in the Russian Federation uh, is uh, uh, somewhat uh, uh, disorganized and not at all harmonized. And we cannot have these uh, statistics. What happens uh, from the moment of inception up uh, to the birth of children? We do not have this aligned uh, statistics and the uh, perinatal um, uh, mortality rate uh, um, is by 2.5 uh, times higher. And uh, in 18 and 19, uh, it has become 2.5 uh, higher. And the coefficient uh, for uh, the uh, be, uh, perinatal uh, mortality is much higher. Uh, and that has nothing to do with HIV. And in Russia, this uh, statistics is somewhat higher than that. Uh, in the Western European countries. What are the reasons for this situation, dear colleagues? Which actions are going to take? Are you aware of uh, similar figures in your countries and in your regions? If the infection is uh, the cause for early death of children in general population in 3.4% of cases, but if the mother is HIV infected, uh, the uh, rate is much higher. And we believe that uh, one of the most probable reasons of this increased prenatal losses is the high neonatal mortality. It is caused by congenital infections which were not detected by pregnant women because these uh, babies, these newborns are not examined. Let us take the general rate and uh, at least 100, 150 babies may, could have suffered from congenital infections. Let me reiterate that uh, reliable data is the following. The, re the reliable uh, data on intrauterine infections in the children of HIV-infected women in uh, Eastern Europe and Central Asia and Russia is is absent. The number of uh, babies who were born were HIV infected. Still, there are some cases are uh, not known. In Moscow, in St. Petersburg, or in Kazakhstan, we cannot tell you exact figures. Etiology of uh, the disease in the first days of the uh, babies is not deciphered. You diagnose with pneumonia, with COVID-19, perinatal. Uh, see um, a central nervous system damage and uh, no one can detect the delayed consequences and also such diseases as, as um, um, palsy, autistic spectrum disease, epilepsy. You are not aware of these figures. The theology of the disease when the baby dies is still unknown. People note either COVID 19 or pneumonia, it means that you do not review your errors and the problem isn't still solved. Modern diagnosis, algorithm of uh, examination of uh, pregnant women and uh, babies are not implemented in the real clinical practice. In uh, There is no accurate criteria for obstetrics and uh, neonatologists obstetricians and uh, gynecologists, and we are not discussing the measures aimed at uh, 
changing the, uh, the situation, altering them. We see that uh, the rate of uh, congenital infections in children uh, is higher than in women. It's 3.56%. Uh, this slide shows that uh, these infections over in 2019, oh, we, we see that uh, more than 13,000 ch uh, children were born. Almost 100 uh, babies will be infected, and 90 of them will have neurological implications. In 10% of cases, if the infection is asymptomatic, the children will have uh, uh, such uh, disorders as schizophrenia, cerebral palsy, and autistic spectrum disease. Uh, 100 and 130 children could have been um, in affected by these infections. Although they are not HIV infected, they have uh, severe infections. They are not healthy. Let us look at the data of Kursk Center. Out of three babies in the intensive care units, some of them died, and only one of them was HIV infected, and others had. Uh, congenital diseases, and uh, I focus on um, psychomotor retardation. They are not capable of studying, although there is no Down syndrome. We can see the other diseases. No one knows these figures related to these babies. There are 10 percent of uh, cerebral palsy and uh, 10 percent of autistic spectrum disease related to this infection. We can just uh, ignore this information and smile, but if you can see this child who is hard of hearing, hard of seeing, and has uh, some disorders, and who is 12 years old and whose mother is uh, HIV infected, she gets ARVT. She is not HIV infected, but uh, we can see the delayed consequences. We cannot claim that this child is healthy. We have a chance to diagnose congenital infections in pregnant women in order to protect the children with the corresponding treatment. And our work shows that we can define the specificity and the sensitivity of uh, each uh, laboratory factors, as, such as antibodies. The uh, DNA uh, in the cells of pregnant women has uh, an unfavorable significance. And uh, we can also see some data on genital mm, Infections, listeriosis, paraviral infections it requires more precise information on uh, diagnostic algorithms which should be used in pregnant women who are HIV infected. We shouldn't just pay attention to ARVT. If we are aware of uh, accurate parameters of uh, acute or active infections in pregnant women, we can see the data. And this infection, we will not only use uh, pseudo, pseudo drugs, we will also use uh, these etiotropic drugs with antiviral effect. It is very easy to prescribe corresponding drugs if you are aware of the criteria. It's not only immunoglobulin, it is also uh, other, uh, another drug such as vilasicravir and some other drugs. Concurrently, we will have uh, the accurate criteria. We can also relate to, uh, it can also be related to cytoplasmosis. We ought to treat women. If we know that HIV infected w pregnant women had some problems in congenital infections, we may set the criteria in accordance with which we should. Uh, diagnose babies in the first days of their lives. They should not only be examined for HIV DNA, but also for other congenital markers of other infections which may affect their health. We can see the accurate criteria on each infection, uh, such as uh, cytomegaloviral infection. There is some, There are some cr um, accurate criteria which will allow us to diagnose the infections, such as uh, cytomegaloviral infection of uh, newborn babies, and we'll also prove 
that uh, congenital patho uh, con disorders are related to con con infections. You can see the criteria of intranatal infection. This criteria allows to prove that uh, the diseases of uh, in uh, uh, CNS, colon, and um, lungs is not related to intrauterine retardation. It is related to perinatal uh, diseases. Uh, uh, it's not related to these diseases. It's related to particular infections which uh, require antiretroviral treatment in order to save the baby's lives, in, in order to provide high quality of uh, to baby's lives. Although they are not a, a HIV infected, they may suffer from other infections and other diseases. We will never diagnose the asymptomatic syntomegaloviral infections in women. We will not uh, use this uh, um, therapy, and uh, the babies will not uh, die at the age of two or three. We should understand that uh, uh, children do not have any cognitive disorders. Nowadays, one of the most probable reasons of aggravating the uh, health of uh, babies and high perinatal losses is uh, the higher rate of uh, congenital infections in HIV-positive mothers' babies. Not all the problems are related to this issue. Still, we should uh, clarify the situation, at least in the RF. We need uh, reliable data on the morbidity uh, in all the intrauterine cases in uh, ne neonatal babies. If the mothers are HIV infected, we need the analysis of reasons, the spectrum and the rate of uh, congenital pathologies as well as uh, disabilities in children. In order to prevent it, we should understand whether it is topical or not and what we can actually do. We need uh, pilot studies in one of the regions of the RF. It has been planned by the Central uh, Service of Epidemiology and the Federal Center of the AIDS. It is planned in one of the regions of the RF. This study will allow us to define the role of the intrauterine infection in uh, the morbidity and uh, the mortality of children. We should not be limited with uh, viral load, we will achieve normal uh, immune system indicators in pregnant women. It is expedient to implement the diagnostic algorithms in order to diagnose active inf infectious pathologies in women. And uh, we should use uh, sensitive and specific laboratory methods, which will allow us to answer this question. This, we will understand whether these uh, pregnant women have in infectious pathologies or not, and well as babies. These uh, children should be provided with uh, etiotropic um, therapy. It, it is impossible without diagnosis. It is impossible to carry out this treatment in the antiretroviral effects without diagnosis. Our involvement in these high-level conferences and our meetings should be effectuated in the amendments, in the documents. It should be related to management of pregnant women who are HIV positive and their children. We hope that uh, the algorithm of examination of these children and uh, their babies should be included in the algorithms of uh, diagnosis and treatment of intrauterine infections in order to decrease the perinatal losses and to decrease the um, baby mortality and to provide high quality of life of our babies. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. I believe first that we should Thank you. 
And so uh, we have to have a uniform uh, document uh, to curtail the HIV infection plus opportunistic ones uh, we've been discussing. Thank you for your kind attention. A very interesting presentation. And Yelena Valerina Tsiganova, the uh, senior specialist for HIV infections for Ministry of Healthcare in the Central Okrug and the head of the clinical uh, department for HIV AIDS uh, prevention. The floor is yours, Yelena Tsiganova. There's no sound, no sound, no sound, no sound. There's no sound, no sound. Okay. We are not hearing your presentation. No sound. No sound. Звука нет. No sound. Звука нет. Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Now we can hear you. Thank you. Sorry for some technical malfunctions. Uh, the, the clinical recommendations uh, uh, presuppose a document uh, based uh, on the objective data for structuring information on the prevention, diagnostics, and rehabilitation, the protocols of the patients, and uh, uh, medical interference, and uh, the plan of treatment and actions of the uh, physician. Uh, also related to diseases should be taken into account and some other factors of the medical aid. Let me remind you that clinical recommendations are based uh, on the principles uh, of uh, uh, proven evidence and that should be uh, also uh, confirmed by the professional and non-commercial organizations. And in the past we didn't have any harmonized uh, recommendations and various NGOs uh, could have uh, uh, developed their own recommendations uh, per disease and formats were different and from the perspective of the legal regulatory framework, all the clinical recommendations were absolutely equalized. And uh, it was really hard uh, to find uh, some common denominator so that to provide assistance uh, to our uh, patients and the Ministry for Healthcare didn't affect uh, the um, development of the list uh, of that uh, of that recommendations. Uh, so we didn't have any uniform approach uh, to the validity of this uh, um, data, and there were no requirements for the frequency of review of such recommendations. Nowadays, uh, the professional NGOs are fully in charge of this requirement recommendations and they are f uh, further on reviewed uh, by the R&D Council uh, of uh, the uh, Ministry of Health and that should be one clinical recommendation per disease uh, for children and adults uh, and it has to be reviewed at least once uh, within the three years period. Uh, this uh, particular slide uh, shows the federal law number 323 uh, on the fundamentals of health care. Yelena, we do not see your presentation. Could you just uh, uh, download it onto the screen? Is it visible? No? Yes, that's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And this is Article 37 of the Federal Law 323 on the fundamentals of uh, health care protection in the Russian Federation, the Organization for Rendering Medical uh, Assistance. And uh, medical assistance, uh, with the exception of clinical uh, uh, probation, uh, should be provided uh, on the basis uh, of the following. It should be uh, reviewed uh, uh, as of the uh, first of uh, uh, till uh, the thirty first of December, and uh, we have the ART uh, drugs, uh, which uh, are uh, registered uh, last year. Uh, this uh, this is tenofovir, lafenamid, doravirin, and those uh, all those combined uh, ones, bactericravir, tenofovir, lafenamid plus m tritzitabin, cobicestat plus tenofiran and dovirin, and uh, this is what we have in the list of new uh, drugs and uh, the. Uh, HIV infection for adults uh, is a uh, standalone uh, uh, block of recommendations. It is presented on the site of the Ministry for Healthcare and uh, the National. Uh, uh, virus Association plus the prevention of diagnostics and HIV infections uh, treatment uh, is uh, presented on PDF and this uh, how this document looks like. I am not going to dwell upon the contents of this document uh, due to the time limit. Uh, this particular slide presents the uh, comparative analysis of ERT for adults and children. And we have a comparison for clinical recommendations of 2020, uh, what has been added uh, since then. And uh, we have uh, some uh, uh, schemes uh, which are preferable ones uh, from uh, non-nuclear uh, uh, um, inhibitors. And also we have the inhibitors of uh, uh, and we have alternative ifovirin, uh, 400 milligrams, and uh, for some particular cases, we have uh, some combined options uh, which had been registered uh, uh, just uh, recently. And uh, these are uh, ERTs. Uh, who could not administer those uh, preferable ones. Uh, and it is all done with due regard to the recommendations of 2020. Though we have some combined uh, drugs having the third component, uh, the uh, uh, viltagravir, uh, the inhibitors, uh, and uh, taravirin. And uh, how do we combine and compare, uh, make a comparison of these uh, newly administered drugs with regard to the recommendations of 2020? Uh, ART um, drugs will be placed onto the second tier that will roll to gravir inhibitors and artesanavir and uh, gronavir. And as alternative, uh, the uh, whole uh, uh, list is included uh, in the uh, drugs of, of, of the first aid for the Russian Federation. And we have some reduced schemes uh, for IRT. Uh, we have um, uh, DTG plus 3TC, but uh, uh, the combination of factors um, define this uh, particular uh, drugs administering. And uh, there should be uh, no uh, clinical uh, um, signs of some secondary diseases, uh, no resist, uh, resistivity to the inhibitors of uh, uh, integrasa and uh, uh, less uh, multiple uh, resistivity, no hepatitis, and no pregnancy. And uh, let me uh, draw your attention on to the block which is absent in the recommendations. That is the post-contact prevention 
at the level of uh, medical staff. And uh, the preferable uh, basis uh, recommended is uh, TDF plus 3TC uh, uh, or TDF plus uh, FTC. And the preferable third one is DTG. And if it's accessible, that should be ATVR, uh, DRV. R, uh, LPVR, uh, RAL, and they could be uh, placed as an alternative ones. Um, and uh, the testing for antibodies uh, to HIV uh, should uh, be provided uh, in the emergency situations and also uh, within one, three, six, twelve months after the contact. Uh, this is actually the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you for your kind attention. We proceed with our deliberations. Dinara Rivnatovna Nabiulina is given the floor. This is uh, the Moscow City Center uh, for uh, HIV AIDS. Dinara Rivnatovna, the floor is yours. Uh, good evening. Uh, good day, dear colleagues. I need uh, the screen demonstration. Yes, uh, do you see presentation on the screen? We can hear you, but no presentation yet. Okay, um, I would like uh, to present uh, my uh, presentation, the HIV treatment uh, for uh, women are uh, able uh, to give birth to children. And so 44% uh, in out-of-patient uh, uh, clinics were uh, inspected and uh, in special consultations in the HA and A in the AIDS center, it was 3%. And uh, normally, uh, these are women up to 25. We have the comparative analysis uh, for various uh, regions brought. And the Russian Federation of the Fertile Age are um, presented here. It's uh, th 3 to 1. The average age is 30 to 45. And these are sexually transmitted diseases, uh, heterosexual contacts, homosexual contacts, uh, presupposed to percent, uh, and intravenal. It takes place uh, uh, at the level of 44 percent. And uh, uh, what is the dynamics uh, for uh, infection? transmission uh, in uh, Moscow. Uh, women have the predominance of heterogeneous uh, um, uh, infections as opposed to uh, intravenal. And uh, we nowadays uh, have a higher level of uh, infected uh, people over 30. And we also have the uh, HIV identified at the level of uh, um, uh, younger generation, HIV infection may affect all the periods uh, of uh, women's uh, age, and uh, normally uh, men create uh, a problem as uh, as opposed to women. And actually, we do not have uh, much uh, much information and uh, awareness of the situation for HIV in the Russian Federation. Uh, Forty percent uh, are those HIV infected are uh, women, but uh, they may have the higher level of SD4 cells and lower level for RNI HIV than men. And uh, the criteria for the initiation of uh, therapy for non-pregnant women are just the same as uh, for uh, males. And uh, women from 17 to uh, Thirty uh, percent are included in that um, comparative analysis. Uh, we have more data for fem uh, for males than for females. Uh, we are guided by the law 323 and uh, Article number 37 on the medical aid provision, and that is uh, uh, number three provision on the basis of clinical recommendation. Uh, 
uh, this uh, treatment will be provided and uh, this um, article will be enacted as of the 1st of January 2022. And uh, 489 law uh, prevails uh, here as well. As to the new clinical recommendations for HIV infections uh, uh, for adults, uh, uh, so we have this list of recommendations. Uh, and uh, if women are pregnant and if the lab test uh, showed HIV and due to the vertical uh, transmission, uh, so the um, treatment should be launched. And some uh, clarifying results could be necessitated. And uh, we really have to prevent the vertical transmission. Uh, the low uh, level of HIV transmission uh, to embryo uh, from mother, so we have to take into account all kinds of uh, preventive measures. And also we have to avoid the ART uh, effect onto the embryo. And we have some recommendations for the launching of the treatment if it is the 28th week. And but um, as to uh, IRT preparations for fertile age, and your recommendations of the Minister of Health of the RF, uh, they stated that uh, it should be prior to indication of delta gravir. This may a result in the deficiencies of the nervous tube of the fetus. It has proven the safety while using uh, in pregnant women, but uh, the risk of occurrence of these deficiencies is high. The, if, the, if the gestation term is uh, few, uh, fewer than nine min, uh, weeks, uh, we mm, sh should uh, substitute the uh, antiretroviral therapy regimen uh, loponavir and some other drugs are used. A over 80% of women would like to have more children in Russia. Here I will refer to discordant pairs because uh, uh, discordant couples and 90% of uh, HIV infected couples are discordant. They have been in having these relations one to five, for one to five years in 56% of cases. ARVT should be indicated in order to prevent the transmission of AIDS from uh, um, infected patients to non-infected partners and prevention of uh, prenatal transmission of uh, um, HIV from mothers to children should also be prevented. Let me focus on the order of the Ministry of Health of RF, which was um, enacted on the 31st of July. It's about the uh, using the um, reproductive technology indications and limitation to their use. HIV infection in discordant partners is uh, the following. It doesn't depend on the status of fertility, and this uh, point is not mentioned in this ruling. And uh, there are uh, some um, kinds of uh, HIV infections which are not uh, the indications, the counterindications to medical assistance, um, and uh, the uh, point three is the exception when the uh, medic medicinal products are indicated, the um, drug interactions should be considered with anti, uh, I mean, the interaction with the antiretroviral drugs, and it uh, doesn't depend on the indications to HIV infection. And if a woman becomes pregnant, the uh, RV. The treatment should be provided for, uh, during the whole gestation period. Here are the uh, diseases associated with uh, uh, AIDS with HIV at uh, one, one, uh, to A to B uh, HIV infections. It is recommended to delay the uh, uh, RRT prior to the uh, subclinical st stage. It lasts at least for, uh, for at least six months, all the patients have uh, should uh, receive the ARVT if there are no counterindications, and the viral load should be less than 50 copies per milliliter for more than six months. This slide shows the figures on uh, the use uh, of uh, reproductive technology in uh, HIV 
patients in our center. The analysis was conducted in accordance with the medical reports. These patients are planning to participate in uh, um, reproductive technology programs. On an annual basis, we see the increase uh, in the issue of medical reports. Reports in 40, 50 percent of cases, the technology is uh, not used. Maybe the, we like the data in 40 percent of cases. Sometimes we don't have any data. If uh, it, the uh, man is uh, HIV infected and his partner, the woman, is not HIV infected. Thus, uh, this technology is not applicable. As for the number of labor and children, we can see the data. We can see positive results. On an annual basis, the number of labor and children increases thanks to additional reproductive technology. Here is the indication to uh, carry out the additional reproductive technology. We see epidemiological indications and gynecological indications when the couple is discordant. As for the, it's, uh, the HIV stages, most of our patients are uh, on the third stage in terms of using this technology, but some of our patients take uh, medical reports with, uh, when they suffer from the secondary stage of the disease, and this stage is higher. Over 200,000 children were born by HIV-infected women. The number of labor of uh, HIV-infected women was uh, more than 13,000 in 2020. This doesn't differ from uh, this year. And uh, since uh, 2001, we use uh, the protocol 076 about the prevention of uh, perinatal transmission of HIV from a mother to the child. ARV chemo pre prevention was uh, provided to more than 12,000 pregnant women. It was uh, 94% in order to decrease the risk of transmission of uh, HIV to a mother to a child. We should focus on uh, the adherence of, uh, um, to treatment. The uh, drugs with fixed combination of doses should be used. And uh, these uh, drugs are authorized for use in Russia. We have 12 doses, and two of them can be purchased via the federal programs. It is free of charge for our patients. Definitely, when we prescribe uh, the drugs, which will be part of the treatment regimen of women who are planning to become pregnant or pregnant women. We consider the information on the drugs. We also consider the data on using these drugs in pregnant women. An important tool is the International Registry of ARVT during pregnancy. On an annual basis, the data on uh, oh, 1,500 uh, pregnant women is included in this registry in terms of using a IRVT. It is also worth mentioning that all the drugs for our patients are bought via the federal program. You can see the form of the federal um, report according to the, the ruling of uh, the government of the RF and uh, they are for women of uh, Childbearing age. Concurrently, we may also consider the opportunity to purchase the drugs for pregnant women for babies, and we should indicate the number of patients and the, the treatment regimen. 50% of women interrupt treatment after labor because they care about children and they don't have a chance to arrive in the center, what are the possible solutions to the problems? Uh, they are they use, using the telemedicine technology and uh, drug dispensation for six months. Now it is possible. Another important issue is uh, the fact that 77% of uh, HIV-infected women suffer from uh, a cervical neck uh, cancer and some other kinds of cancer. Vaccination 
is important. Another key issue is the following. When we conduct the ARVT in uh, HIV patients, we should consider in, uh, the interaction between drugs. We mean hormone and contraceptive drugs. Women can be on treatment. We have the Liverpool website where all these interactions between drugs are represented. In conclusion, let me highlight that uh, it is of prime importance to um, carry out safe and um, efficacious prevention in order to prevent the progression of HIV infection and uh, in order to prevent the cervical neck cancer and uh, the transmission of HIV from a mother to a child. If a woman is on treatment, on effective treatment for a long time, the baby is also prevented. We lessen the transmission of the virus from the mother to the child, and we uh, would like to eliminate it. Thank you very much for your attention. Dinara, thank you for your interesting presentation. We have uh, one more presentation. Anna de Rabina. Improving adherence to HIV treatment through home care in Central Asia countries. Thank you very much. Yes, I am Anna de Rabina. I am the regional director for Central Asia of the ICAP organization. We are part of the Columbia University, and we have our own branches in three countries of Central Asia. Our key work in Central Asia is uh, aimed at uh, HIV infection programs, and we also deal with uh, infection control. Since 2020, we have uh, been involved in the COVID-19 programs. And our today's presentation is uh, dedicated to our program, which we have been implemented uh, since 2020. Jointly with the Centers of Family Medicine, we improve the adherence of the patients to ARVT. This uh, program has uh, some uh, key focus groups. The patients who start um, being treated uh, start the uh, RVT for the first time, and some of them have already received uh, RVT for six months, for at least six months. But due to poor adherence, they didn't manage to achieve viral suppression. Last year, we also involved uh, the patronage of uh, pregnant women who receive a RVT regardless of uh, the viral load and their status. This program is has been implemented since 20. 12, you can see the regions in which we are currently working. The program was launched in Pavlodar and uh, Eastern Kazakhstan region in 2018. And then we understood that this program is uh, effective and uh, it was also widespread in Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan. What is the crux of this program? We have the standards of medical assistance provided by AIDS Center and uh, the Centers of Family Medicine. All the people are treated by nurses. Uh, um, they communicate with nurses who conduct the patronage calls and visits for six months. These visits and calls are structured. They comply with a certain schedule. For uh, the first three months, they visit them on a bi-weekly basis, and then they um, visit them once a month. And uh, the nurses call the patients in order to clarify whether they're in a good condition or not, and, uh, find, and the nurses also find out whether they have any problems or any questions. The informed consent of the patients is required. The nurses or the doctors inform the patients of these programs. They dwell upon the program of interaction and the requirements for the patients. The visit procedures are described, and if the patient agrees, he signs the informed consent form. Then the doctor transfers the data to the nurse. The nurse will work with this patient, and then the nurse calls the patient, and they agree upon the date and time of the visit and the place of the visit, and the visit schedule is uh, compiled. 
It should be convenient for patient visits. The visits take place at home or at some other places which are convenient for patients. Originally, we planned only home visits, but then we realized that uh, some patients re refuse uh, to accept the, uh, to, um, to welcome the nurses at home, especially in the rural area, in order to avoid some extra questions of the neighbors, because uh, nurses, although nurses do not wear any special robes, special clothing, Sometimes they meet at the neutral territory, at parks or workplaces and some other places. Each visit is structured, but on the whole, the nurse collects the complaints of the patient, assesses the uh, patient's condition, measures the temperature, the pressure, tracks the occurrence of side effects and questions the patient for tuberculosis syndrome symptoms. She, uh, the nurse also calculates the number of the tablets and uh, collects some information on the adherence. In the course of the first visit, the challenges are discussed uh, by the uh, nurse and the patient. Uh, th these challenges are related to ARVT, and then they uh, elaborate the certain plan for resolving these issues. They also work with their partners. If this person with, uh, lives with uh, a, par a partner, some of, other, uh, some of the family members may also be involved as assistants in treatment. It uh, is observed in discordant couples. They also discuss whether they have a chance to reveal the status to the partner. Some alternative methods on organizing testing uh, of partners for HIV infection are put forth. When we face the COVID-19 situation, the delivery of ARVT drugs was also carried out by patronage nurses. Over 300 visits for over the last year were related to the delivery of antiretroviral uh, um, therapy drugs. They were dispensed for six months in Kazakhstan. Still due to transport limitation, this uh, reserves for, for three to six months should be transported and the uh, nurses were actively involved in it. This approach is structured. A special electro uh, electronic mobile app was uh, devised and it contains the information about the nurses' work and uh, the doctors and uh, patients, as well as the nurses, exchange the information. The visit dates and the workload are documented in this app. It also includes the data on the condition of the patients. The visits may also be confirmed in these patients, uh, in these apps. Uh, it allows us to ensure that uh, the, uh, the nurses no, uh, do not only communicate with the patients by phone and uh, the information is uh, sent to the mobile phones of the patients and then the information is uh, included in the program to ensure that uh, the nurses uh, gave the uh, full volume of the information. Uh, and printed out some flip charts uh, for pregnant women, uh, for uh, breastfeeding, uh, for those uh, cooperating uh, with uh, uh, teenagers, and uh, for the general public. And uh, those flip charts uh, are used by the nurses in the course of uh, the discussions with the patients. And uh, um, by the 15th of April 2021, we had 75 nurses to take part in that program from 30 medical institutions uh, with a coverage of uh, over 6,000 clients. Uh, the completion, uh, the program completion took place at the level of uh, 4,405 uh, and uh, 949 patients are still within the program. And uh, those uh, patients uh, who uh, withdrew from the program uh, with the viral load oh, lower than um, one. 
thousand millimeters. And those who didn't uh, show the efficiency of uh, IRT uh, constitute 78 percent, and those uh, studying IRT constituted 90 to 92 percent. And uh, we had a more in-depth analysis of all the data and realized that as of the next year, we have to get focused on the second group, uh, having some failures in the uh, treatment. A part of the patients without any external help uh, may be quite successful in their therapy, and therefore, uh, the program includes those uh, who already have some uh, faults in the treatment process. And uh, uh, those who are subject to the therapy and those who had uh, some problems uh, and uh, about two-thirds uh, complete the program. And uh, what's go what is going on with the remaining one third? Uh, we have uh, from 11 to 20 percent of those who say no to the program. And as to the um, patronage and home nursing program, people do not want to, to disclose their status. They do not want to communicate. Uh, the people want to relocate, uh, and uh, actually, they do not sign up uh, for the six months program. And from eight to sixteen uh, percent withdraw from the program. Uh, just uh, unexpectedly to, uh, due to migration, a little uh, um, effect, um, a seizure, and uh, actually uh, the person may be excluded from the program uh, due to the aggressive behavior. And uh, we uh, may say that nurses uh, may become threatening, uh, nurses' visits may become threatening uh, for their health. And that's these people are also excluded from that list. Uh, hereby, we see this uh, breakdown uh, for females and males uh, without virus suppression for Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan. But uh, as for men and women, it's about uh, 78 to 80 percent. And it's good news that we haven't noticed uh, any. Uh, problems uh, as to the uh, uh, injections of uh, drugs and non-injections of drugs. And we couldn't identify 100% whether they consume them or not, but uh, we uh, just looked it through the uh, analysis and compared the data. What are those uh, key takeaways uh, of that program uh, deployment uh, for home nursing over the past three years? This program promotes uh, the uh, virus suppression of, of, of patients uh, onto the IRT, having very high uh, viral load. And also, we have a higher awareness uh, and uh, getting the higher skills and uh, habits and competence for the medical nurses. And the status of the medical nurse has, uh, became higher. And there were quite a number of functions upon consultancy which was provided by the nurses. And we actively uh, um, uh, trained our nurses, and they now know better what kind of consultancy services they may provide, and they felt more comfortable. And I do hope that this program will go on uh, progressing, and we will be uh, pro improving it and uh, embedding it. And I would like uh, to express my gratitude to the medical staff, to the patients uh, involved in the program, and to the Republican uh, regional and uh, city centers, uh, uh, which uh, do support uh, this particular initiative. And of course, uh, I would like to thank those uh, sponsors, uh, Perfar CDC and uh, Fund uh, on AIDS, uh, competing uh, named after Elton John. And uh, we you had a very interesting presentation, very interesting. Um, 
deliberations. So we are already exceeding our time limit, uh, six minutes plus. And so I would like to thank all the presenters and uh, for the quality of your presentations, uh, for those materials and documents uh, which you resorted to. Uh, my dear co-chairman, would you like to say something in conclusion of our session? Professor, I would like to thank you very much for having WHO co-chair this session. We've learned quite a bit around the treatment uh, protocols and treatment successes that are occurring um, in the region. We would be uh, very interested in engaging with our colleagues around how we can bring both the fixed dose combination, one pill once a day for simplicity, and also ensuring that pregnant women have access uh, to the most, the best regimens possible. We have learned over this past year from WHO over the last two years that this risk of neural tube defects has really gone down to a very low level risk that's why now we recommend using uh, dolutegravir uh, around the world during, uh, during, the, uh, during pregnancy and even in early pregnancy. So however we can assist um, with ensuring that every woman, every child has access to the best regimens, we would be uh, very, very welcome uh, and uh, excited to do that with our colleagues. Again, excellent presentations. And with your permission, we can close this session as I don't believe we have time for questions and answers. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Denis Alexandrovich, if you allow me to, I would like to thank you uh, for your wonderful uh, chairing of the session. It was a very friendly uh, atmosphere and uh, and very demanding as well. Much depends uh, on the chairman, and uh, it's uh, our honor and privilege to have you uh, presiding over the session. Thank you once again, dear colleagues. I wish you all uh, great success, uh, interesting communication, uh, in new information, and uh, have a good day. Bye-bye.